When Motley Crue announced that they were getting back together, there was a lot of mixed reactions within the music industry. Uh, you yourself, were you surprised when they got back together? Did you see it coming? No, I honestly wasn't. That was one band that I thought would hold to their farewell because, you know, I'm in touch with Nikki. I've known him for a while and uh, he's a friend and we, we text from time to time and we talk and when they were ending that tour. He was very adamant about it ending for all the right reasons, uh, not wanting to stay too long at the party, not, you know, it's still being the original band, um, wanting it to go out strong. So all the reasons why you would want a band to end. But I think the temptation that's out there for every band of the the money and look, let's be honest, I mean, Sure, these bands want to play again. I'm sure they got the itch to be creative again and go out and play. But 99% of the reason behind any reunion for any band is money. I mean, nobody reunites because it means less money. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's a business and there's nothing wrong with that. So I think when there's a big clump of money thrown on the table and then the additional interest that they had from the movie, it was just, just the, the, it's too much of a uh, carrot. It's too much of a opportunity to ignore. And uh, but I was surprised. I was surprised they did it. That was the one band that I would. When people said every band gets back together, that was the one band that I said no. You know, I don't think it's going to happen with them. Mix got health issues. I talked to Vince about it before it was announced. He was really content doing his his own thing. He, Vince was playing clubs and theaters but he was getting great money and he was flying in on his own plane and leaving before at the end of the night and going back home and he had it down he was loving what he was doing and uh but again you dangle enough money people are going to to take it and i don't blame them for doing so if the offer is is enough there's enough uh meat on the bone so to speak and and clearly somebody hit them with their number and here here's the other thing daniel that's that's happening is that until this pandemic thing happened, we have had uh, a ton of shows and touring in the last four or five years, many would tell you, myself included, it's too much. It, the, the touring world has gotten completely oversaturated at every level because it's the only way bands make men, money on the road. So you're seeing shows where they're offering what they call... Uh, dynamic pricing, meaning that you go to a concert and the guy sitting next to you may have paid $10 for that seat and you paid 300 for yours. Happens all the time because they're fluctuating prices just to fill the buildings. So you got all this craziness going on in the industry because there's a lot of bands that are on the road just too much and there's there's only so much that the the the, the world can absorb. And I think what happens is, and especially when you look at the music festivals out there, so many of them are pulling from the same talent pool. They have to keep repeating the same bands. All the bills are starting to look and feel the same. My point in saying all this is that if you're a band that has been able to stay away for a while, whether due to dysfunction or you just broke up or somebody doesn't want to do it anymore, those bands to promoters have a real, real attractiveness to them because they haven't been out there and people aren't sick of seeing them. All of these promoters are challenged to find something new and exciting to put at the top of their bill. So nothing makes a band's interest, demand, and guarantees go up higher than if you can sit it out. So that's why Rage Against the Machine was doing gargantuan business because they hadn't been seen in years. Uh, Tool finally puts out a record in tours, selling out arenas with virtually no radio airplay because they were away for 13 years or whatever in terms of a record. My Chemical Romance, a band from my home state of New Jersey, I mean, they were a big band and they were doing well when they broke up, but not like this. They've come back and they're multi-night arena band. Um... You know, even the Misfits, uh, dormant for whatever, they come back, they're in arenas. They not really weren't an arena band before this. So absence makes the guarantees and the interest go way higher. 
And it also pulls a lot of interest. The, 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 if you're Live Nation or AEG and you're trying to do a festival, you're looking for bands like that. Every day you're going to their booking agent saying, how much would it take? How much would it take? And every year you're throwing another couple million on that pile or whatever to the point where everybody has their number and they're like, you know what? I got to go make this money. And, and Motley falls into that category too. They were, now they weren't out of the game that long. They were out of the game four or five years. But still, four or five years of not seeing them, movie comes out, gets interest, Live Nation says, hey, we want to do this thing, what's it going to take? Boom, there you go. So that's the that's the big thing, man. I talk to, I have friends of mine who are in these bands that aren't as active as they wish they would be, and I tell them all the time, I'm like, you know what, if you got the dough and you can lay low for four or five years, do it, because when you come back... You're going to destroy. You're going to do really, really well. And that's exactly what's happening. People want to see the bands they're not sick of seeing. Yeah, I mean, look at Guns N' Roses. One of the biggest tours. If ACDC starts up, which rumors were they were about to before this hit, that'll be you know gargantuan. System of a Down, I had uh, their bass player on my show not too long ago. And he was, uh, Shavo, and he was like, you know, oh, man, I wish we should be doing more. We should be doing more. And I said... Shava, when did you play in L.A. last? And he told me. I said, how many people showed up? He said, it was like 35,000. I said, no disrespect, but if you played L.A. three times a year, 35,000 people aren't showing up every time. You know, it's just, if you play, if you if you space it out and you really create that that demand and that mystique and make it special when you play. Now, I'm not saying that's, the, the, most of this is not calculated by these bands. It's a byproduct of a dysfunction within them. But the 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 payoff is that they usually will get much much better guarantees. And there's this philosophy of less is more. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe for more. Everything on this channel is completely original. I'm the one doing all the videos and all the editing. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support me, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Thanks for watching.